Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. And today we are talking about a movie that I have talked about on the channel before. And that was via this Criterion Blu-ray release of it. This is War of the Worlds from 1953. But today we're talking about a brand new 4K UHD version of War of the Worlds from Paramount. Um, and I gotta tell you up front, this transfer looks pretty stunning. And I really liked how this one looked, but to my eye, I think the 4K looks a little bit better in terms of detail and color. Um, Cause this is a um, 4K Ultra HD. I, I'm not sure about the HDR or not, but looks just fantastic you know uh, Technicolor film uh, based on the book by HG Wells which previously had been adapted as a radio format type thing by uh, Orson Wells and his Mercury uh, theater on the air troupe in 1938 Halloween of 19 or I'm sorry October 30th in 1938 um, famously but this uh, film adaptation is really striking. And it's directed by Byron Haskin, who would go on to do uh, Robinson Crusoe on Mars, had previously, I mean, I, I guess also Conquest of Space, and previously, um, well, I'll talk about the pr producing side in a second. Uh, it's produced by George Powell, who did When Worlds Collide, which is included here as a second feature on a Blu-ray uh, separately by itself. Um, but Pal would do things like Destination Moon and The Time Machine and other H.G. Wells. And as I understand it, this film was originally shot in three-strip Technicolor. And like I said, this 4K is just gorgeous. It looks just lovely to my eye. And it won an Academy Award for Special Effects. It uh, was also nominated for Sound and Editing Awards. And I totally get that. Uh, the sound on the 4K is really good, too. Apparently, a lot of the sound, effect, sound effects were created specifically for this film and then I think were used by other films later uh, as commented in one of the commentary tracks um, by Joe Dante at one point. Um, but the sounds associated with the Martians, their ambient noise, the ray blast, the ships, but also the army ordnance and the planes have some unique sound signatures. It's just really well done. And the film was a big hit at the time. I think it made about $2 million at the box office. And I think one thing that comes across in the commentary track uh, with uh, Joe Dante, Bob Burns, and Bill Warren is them talking about how scary this film was to audiences at the time in 1953. This movie just freaked people out. I think partially because it's played pretty straight. You know, like uh, the main cast members, Gene Barry and um, and Anne Robinson, among others, really play it pretty dramatically. And it's not campy. I think partially because we see people killed pretty early on in the film. And that really makes an impression, especially because of the, the sort of rays the ray guns that the Martians use just kind of completely disintegrate people. And complete disintegration, I think, is just really scary because uh, you don't get to see a death moment. You just get to see a silhouette as it disappears into ash, basically. And and that person is gone. And, and you feel that in this movie. And I think that definitely had an impact on people at the time. And seeing the Martian designs... Um, that you see in little little spots you know the actual creatures themselves definitely scary there's a great moment where one of them reaches out and puts like a tentacled hand on ann robinson's shoulder and the face she makes is pretty believably scared you know in a way um anyway so this is the lovely slip case for this disc has the fold out inside and then this is our internal artwork comes with a digital code for both uh, both of the films uh, and then you have your two discs you have your 4k 
of War of the Worlds and your Blu-ray of When Worlds Collide in there and some uh, artwork on the inside that's a little different but not reversible. Um, so yeah, film looks great. I don't think it has any new extras per se that have never been on any release before, um, but it has some of the extras from this. It has some from the DVD. Um, I'll just go through and compare. It has the two commentary tracks, which um, it looks like only, I think only one of them made it to this one. Um, it is the better of the two commentaries. It is informative and sort of very funny teaming of a trio of gents. Super fan and artifact custodian Bob Burns, science fiction film authority Bill Warren, and J director Joe Dante. And I always love Joe Dante in commentaries because he has this incredible depth of knowledge when it comes to cinema, and it seems nearly boundless when you watch him talk and listen to him talk about movies. Um, Bill Warren talks about the little known facts about the original 1924 Paramount script which was prepared for Cecil B. DeMille, who's an exec producer on this one, and points out sort of the numerous interesting aspects of the differences. Um, let's see here. Uh, they, they tend to go into all kinds of stuff, talking about the special effects, again, bringing up the idea that the sound effects were made for this film, tons of little factoids, but they also love to point out the... the various and <clears throat> quite many um, bit players because this cast is not one that I recognize a lot of players from with a few exceptions but um, they talk about like Paul Fries, Bill Phipps, Henry Brandon, Jack Crucian, Edgar Barrier, Russ Bender, Russ Conway, Ralph Dumke, Ned Glass, Carolyn Jones, Alvy Moore, and Walter Sandy uh, and it's just one of those things where you're like I didn't know who that actor was, and they have just sort of a whole, or Joe Dante has sort of a whole <clears throat> sort of uh, take on their career, what they what they were best known for, et cetera, et cetera. So that's great stuff, because I definitely wouldn't be able to pick that up on my own. Um, th th it's just a great track overall, like I said, included on this disc. Uh, the second track is with stars Gene Barry and Ann Robinson talking about the film, their memories of it, and their careers overall. Um, a little lighter uh, of a track, not not terrible, but um, interesting to hear their takes on it. Uh, definitely some facts uh, about the film in there. Uh, let's see here. I'm just looking at comparing. Uh, well, I'll go through. I'll go through these separately in a second. But um, so they have a making of, which is called "The Sky Is Falling," the the making of War of the Worlds which is a 30-minute making of, and I can't find the original source for that. I don't think, I'm not sure if it was on the original DVD, but it, you know, they interview um, Robert Cornthwaite, Gene Barry, Ann Robinson, uh, Bob Burns again, Ray Harryhausen, Justin Humphreys, who wrote about George Powell, uh, a bunch of other actors and, I mean, a few other actors and like some, um, I think there's an art director thrown in there. Uh, very nice overview of the making of the film at 30 minutes. Um, sort of reappraisal. Uh, I guess the film's assistant director is in there and he has some videotapes remarks from uh, one of the designers. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a solid, you know, making of. Uh, also included is H.G. Wells' The Father of Science Fiction which is about 10 and a half minutes long and a look at H.G. Wells almost cradle to grave kind of um, sort of spearheaded by director Nicholas Meyer who of course did Star Trek 2 but have also did uh, Time After Time which is a really interesting movie with which has H.G. Wells as a character so he's obviously fascinated I like Nicholas Meyer a lot um, John S. Parkington, Forrest J. Ackerman and H.G. Uh, Wells is himself is included in some archival footage in this um, overview of him himself as a writer and force in science fiction. Uh, and then, of course, uh, when worlds collide. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Uh, the Mercury Theater On Air presents the War of the Worlds broadcast. The hour-long broadcast is also included here. Uh, as it was here, I'm just trying to see what else is included here. Um, movie Archaeologist, a new program on the film's visual and sound effects featuring Bert uh, and visual effects supervisor Craig Barron. That's exclusive to this one. The, the Criterion uh, audio interview with producer George Pal from 1970, exclusive to the Criterion. Sky is Falling documentary uh, is on here as well. That, of course, we have on ours. And the radio program. Um, yeah, so you get a few more things on this disc that aren't included there. Um, <clears throat> but as I said, the other feature is an entire extra film and that's when worlds collide 1951 also produced by george powell directed by rudolph matei kind of a story of it's a disaster movie of sorts where some scientists discover that there are two bodies that are going to collide with the earth in a matter of uh months and eight months they say something like that one is a small one called zira that's going to pass by first. And then the other is something called Bellus, which is basically like a planet that's going to hit earth and destroy us. And so you have a couple scientists kind of trying to rally the United nations and the world at large to build some kind of these kind of space arcs to get at least some of the human population off the planet. Uh, in time, but they are sort of scoffed at and they actually have to find like a private uh, rich dude basically to help fund the arcs and we sort of go through the drama the dramatics of you know can they get this done in time who will be saved um, definitely some interesting parallels with now in some respects and obviously very similar to the uh, don't look up film at least in terms of the idea of trying to convince the world that there's something coming that's going to destroy our planet and that being very difficult to do. Um, but anyway, this uh, is a, a very interesting science fiction film and it is bare bones. Uh, it has a trailer, but nothing else. And so I had to bring up the When the Worlds, when Worlds Collide imprint Blu-ray, which came out uh, in 2020, I believe. And... Um, I think the scans might be the same, uh, but this do does have some nice features. This has uh, an exclusive audio commentary with film critics Barry Forshaw and Kim Newman, who I like very much, and I think that's a great track. And then 90 minutes of George Powell extended interviews uh, with Gene Roddenberry, Ray Bradbury, Ray Harryhausen, Roy Edward Disney, uh, Wa Chang, Russ Tamblin, and Duke Goldstone. I guess they're all talking about George Powell. Uh, I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched this disc, but so you do get some extra features on this that you don't get here, but this is just included as a bonus and it is a nice bonus to have, but I just wanted to be, make people aware of like the differences of other releases. But as I said at the top, this war of the world's 4k pretty darn stunning. Uh, so if high picture quality is something you value, then, uh, this is going to be a release you may want to pick up. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.